Hi, I'm Mara Webster with Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited to be talking all things Lucifer with the wonderful D.B. Woodside. And the first thing that I wanted to start by talking about is your performance and, and how it shifts tonally in the show and, and some of the really interesting and unique challenges of that, because obviously it's a show that really embraces the heightened elements, and that's one of the reasons that it works so well and why audiences embrace it so much. But when you look at your performance and your character, you're playing a character who keeps things a little closer to his chest than a lot of the other characters do and so I was interested in what the unique challenges are performance wise where you're playing both to a really heightened scenario in a lot of scenes but also you're, you're giving a very nuanced and internal performance at the same time in a lot of moments. Um, that's uh, very true yeah um, I was just talking to someone um, the other day about this is uh, this is probably the most difficult character I've ever had to play. Uh, and people are always surprised by that. But I think if you if you know the show really well, uh, every season that I've showed up, it's felt like he's a different character, right? Uh, from when he started the first season to uh, when we're finishing up um, the sixth season, which you know drops in a few days here. Um, yeah, it's 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 there's there's a lot that goes on for him internally, and that's also the my my favorite stuff to to play. Um, uh, I love those quiet moments um, um, where you really get a chance to see a character just behave or think, um, trying to figure out what they're going to do out of whatever crazy situation that they're that they're placed in. But yeah, it's 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 been it's been challenging, but um, but I've really enjoyed it. And with the fact that it does weave so many different types of elements and just as you've kind of got a handle on, okay, this is this is what the show is doing now, then there's a musical episode and yes. then the last season's incredibly emotional and heartfelt. What were the spaces in shooting this final season where you felt like it was really pushing you outside of your comfort zone into new spaces and new arenas? Because it's done that, like you said, in different ways every season. Um, I would say where it really pushed me out, I mean, and this isn't the sixth season, but that musical episode had most of us terrified. Right. Uh, it's just it's 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 not my thing to do, uh, um, but uh, it was fun. Um, I loved to just, you know, when you get thrown stuff like that, you just got to just dive into the deep end. Right. There's just no sense trying to trying to um, find some comfortable way of getting in. You just have to jump in um, this season. Uh, I'd probably say as opposed to. Um, most of the other seasons actually hit my comfort zone, um, actually hit 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 my sweet spot. Um, most of most of the stuff that I have this season tends to be heavy, um, uh, pretty, pretty intense. And I know that scares uh, some actors, but that's actually what I'm drawn to. That's my wheelhouse. That's what I'm most comfortable with. Um, it's the comedy that uh, that's that's what terrifies me because you know instantly if it if it's if it's successful right if no one laughs then you bombed um, with drama it's it's less about eliciting a reaction and more about just allowing people to to feel what they feel so three people watching a serious scene may walk away with three different feelings and all of them. Um, all of them are correct. A comedic scene, you have three people watching and one person laughs, the other two people go, ah, I didn't find it funny, you know? So it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot more black and white, and I think, you know? So this season was, was a lot, um, was freeing for me. And I felt like I was really able to let the celestialness of a man and deal, I was able to, to let that go more than any other season, especially him slipping into, uh, you know, the, the job of a, of a police officer, of a police officer, which I had my own personal reservations uh, um, about given my own personal history with the police and just what's going on in the, in the world right now, what has been going on for a really long time, just the fact that people have cell phones now. So, um, but this season has been, I'd probably say, um, in a weird way, the easiest season for me material wise, because it's so, it's so close to the type 
of stuff that I love to do. Yeah. And because you were mentioning the musical episode, I wanted to ask a little bit about the aspects of, of shaping those numbers, because what's so interesting about it is obviously, if you look at the number that you and Rachel did together, you're going off and pre-recording your tracks individually. So even though it is a collaborative performance on screen in the end, you're actually starting it individually on your own and already having to think about how your performances are going to meld together. And then once you're on set, then you've got the obvious collaboration of your performance together in that moment. And so how did the two of you kind of find all those different spaces where all of that alignment was going to come so that we could have that performance be what it was? Well, when you listen, I like I say this all the time. I mean, uh, acting, great acting, it's who you're partnered with. Right. So to do this scene with with Rachel um, was a gift. It was a privilege. She is fantastic. Um, we have really good chemistry and we've known each other for a really long time. So even though we we recorded all of this stuff um, independent of each other, getting there on that day, first of all, it was uh, I think it was like an early Tuesday morning or something in uh, Burbank. Um, it was a, it was a little chilly outside, but sunny. So, so it was the perfect day to 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 be out there and to be dancing because you're not going to have to have to really worry about, you know, sweating through your makeup. Right. Um, and we got there and we just talked about it and we just jumped into it. And um, uh, and I think it helps because the number itself is so energetic and so much fun. Um, and those dancers were fantastic and um, Brooke, fantastic. So we really just got a chance to just jump in there and play. And nothing that we did was wrong. They would just whatever we did, they would just make it right. And they would just tell us to just go with that. So. Um, I think it starts first with having someone who's so um, great to play with and um, Rachel is a riot and, you know, just keeps everything fun and, and interesting and she's so kind. And so um, we were really able to have a really good time on that day. I also wanted to talk about the relationship between Amenadiel and Lucifer, because what I love about the performances and the way that you and Tom bring these characters to life together is the fact that they're such polar opposites as people. You know, if Lucifer's having a bad day, everybody in the room's going to know all about it. You know, and going back to what we were saying before, Amenadiel's going to keep it closer to his chest. And yet at the same time, you still find those commonalities and those similarities between the two of them. And throughout the entire arc of the show, particularly with their time on Earth, they've navigated a lot of very similar roadblocks and hurdles together. So there is that really cohesive element. And so was wanted to ask about the way in which the two of you through your performances have always really embraced the juxtapositions of your characters, but also really always sought to find where those commonalities and where those similarities and where some of their traits really mesh together are. Um, well, first of all, I mean, Tom is so much, I mean, he's just fantastic to play with and we have great chemistry. I mean, and that started from day one, um, we, my first scene was with Tom. Um, the very first scene I believe that we shot was in the pilot, which was Amenadiel showing up. Um, it was his introduction to the series. Um, and one of the things I think, um, you know, Len Wiseman directed the pilot and Len is a, he's a friend and um, a brilliant director, um, meticulous uh, and, I think I remember him telling us because we were trying to find that that balance of when a men and deal is around. Um, that's when we see a more grounded Lucifer, um, because a men and deal is not just going to kind of give in to to his flights of fancy, to his um, uh, jokes, you know, as hey, you know, we all know that, you know, when you go home to family, right, family sees through all of our bullshit, right? Like you can't. You, you can't really fool family or, you know, so you're you're a lot more real and grounded with your family right away. And so that was something that I think him and I started to naturally gravitate towards was when we were going to be in a scene together, it was going to have a certain amount of weight always. Um, even the scenes that are that um, might be somewhat light, uh, a lighter between us. Um, they still have a certain weight, you know? Um, you'll find that I think the most successful scenes between Tom and I are never gonna be the scenes that are just um, jokey, 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 
You know, um, I'm sure that there were a few scenes written like that. I, in my honest opinion, I don't necessarily think, I think the scenes worked, you know, but I don't necessarily think that they um, jumped off, jumped off the screen as much as some of the more uh, uh, grounded stuff, um, some of the more serious stuff uh, that happens between the, the, the brothers. Um, and and I, I found working with Tom that he also has an incredible wit and ease. Um, he's very, he's very uh, facile with the language. And so what was also great for me is when you have that type of partner, you can start to, you know, um, mimic them, right? And to find your own way into some of those trickier scenes. Um, and so it was great him and I building that kind of a relationship. I think there was one scene um, that for me was one of the funniest scenes, but it's also still really grounded in something real, was uh, I it's either the first season or second season when the brothers wind up in Linda's office at the same time on the couch, right? And they're complaining about each other. Um, it's a funny scene, but it's a scene that's really grounded. I mean, here are two people that have issues with each other, and now they find themselves in a therapist's office complaining about each other. And so the setup is what's funny, right? Like the setup of these two celestial beings, these two godlike creatures sitting in a human therapist's office trying to figure out, um, uh, you know, find their way through their complicated relationship. Um, it's, the, it's the setup that's hilarious, but the way that we played it was, was grounded, was, you know, and it was real. Um, and so it was just it was just such a pleasure working with him. Yeah. And it, it's also grounded in the sense of taking the larger than life aspects of the story and grounding them as well. And if we look at Amenadiel as a parent and the entire thread where he desperately wants his his kid to be celestial as well and mm. is so disappointed at first when his baby is born without wings. Um, you know, and again, it's it's played for comedic effect, but it's so grounded in the way that you deliver that performance and it's completely relatable because any parent has that sense of, what if I can't protect my child from the things that might hurt it? You know, what if my child doesn't have the life that I want for them, you know, and everything that they want to be available to them. And so when you have storylines like that, is it very natural and very easy to find the commonality and to find the grounded elements because of the way that they're writing all of the emotional beats into it? Or are you also consciously thinking about how do I take this really large idea of a story and ground it into the really granular emotional beats? Um, I think it's both those and, and a little more, um, uh, 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 trying to bring um, something personal to it, which, which always helps the work. For me, I'm a parent, right? All parents know that, you know, whether we admit it or not, right, there are certain things we may want our child to do or become, but, you know, if you're a good parent, you don't push it on them. You just kind of like try to suggest it and hint it and, you know, um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll call myself out. My, my daughter's 11. She's getting ready to turn 12 in a, in a few days here um, next week. And um, I really wanted her to play soccer. And I just uh, spent years just really trying to coax her into soccer, soccer, soccer. I just, I wanted her to be this amazing soccer player. And she was just not feeling it. It just did not appeal to her and it crushed my heart, but I had to let it go. You know, there, she has other interests. There, there, there are things that, 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 that she loves. Um, and as a parent, I, I, I support that, um, of course, but I would be lying if I didn't say deep down, my heart is broken, right? It's just shattered because she doesn't want to play soccer. Um, so I think a men in deal, you know, um, he, he accepts his son, loves his son, um, uh, well, you know, wants to protect his son, obviously, I think that's the first thing that every parent wants, right, is the, is to be um, this incredible protector of, of their child. Um, but he's disappointed, you know, um, he, it, it, you know, and I think that's also, it's, it's great, because you get to see, and this is great writing, um, 
you get to see that here is this person who is um, celestial, who's very accepting of, of his child as, as most people are, but there's always a hint of, you know, them being disappointed of, 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 you know, of them not being a, a, a perfect creature. And so as we've watched Amenadil's journey, as we've watched him embrace humanity more, as we've watched him become a much more present and sensitive being, he's not perfect. And so even, um, you know, with, with, the, with the introduction of his own child, not being an angel, um, or so he believes, um, he's still disappointed because there's still a small part of him that thinks celestials are better than humans. And so he still has to, he, he still has growing to do, right? He still has, you know, and that's, that's actually beautiful because I, because I, because I don't think we're all as great as we can be. I, I, we, we all still have these things that, that we need to work on, um, parts of us that, that flare up that, you know, we definitely need to address. And so he, he's, he's still a work in progress. I'd also love to talk about your work directing on the show, which is something that has been gestating with you for so long. And then you finally got the opportunity to direct episode eight in the season. And, and by your own assertion, all of the characters in the show could be the lead of their own series because they're so richly written and constructed and the storylines are thought out with so much depth to them. And within the episode that you directed, you had the opportunity to really direct the entire cast in ensemble moments. And so with that in mind, and thinking about you know, the richness of every single character, all of the elements that you're trying to bring within a scene, but also paying service to every character within it. How did that inform the way that you were directing those types of scenes and really thinking about making sure that every single character is constantly present and that we're constantly evolving the details that we're learning about them or the way that we know them in the moment? Um, I love, 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 love directing. I just love it. It's something I've been doing for a long time. I finally got the opportunity to do it in a professional setting. Um, and so I was really ready uh, to go. Um, uh, probably, I was probably overprepared, but uh, you know, I'm, that's, the, that's, the, that's the nerd in me. You know, uh, I like walking into everything uh, overprepared. Um, it was incredible. The experience was incredible. I do have to paint uh, the picture a little bit because we, you know, we were one of the first shows to go back to work with all the COVID restrictions. I know they've lessened them, you know, now six, nine months later, but we were really strict. So just to paint that picture, it really means normally you have a day that's 12 hours and you have that 12 hours to get a full day's work. In COVID, we had 10. And what that really means with all the restrictions is we had eight and a half. So when, so as a, new director stepping into a very successful show with special effects and a huge ensemble to to know that you really only have eight to eight and a half hours a day so you're missing you know four hours uh to uh, uh accomplish the work was shall we say stressful um i never would have made it without uh joan cunningham uh, who is uh, our uh, was our UPM and of course Matt Pexa, my first AD, um, uh, now a really close friend and an amazing human being. Um, it was incredible. Um, directing everybody was challenging because I I I, I come um, you know I'm an actor so uh, I'm going to come at directing from an emotional place. Um, and also a visual place because I'm a, um, I'm an artist and I see things visually. Um, everyone was fantastic, but you're also dealing with, and I love all these people you're dealing with, um, all of these egos, right? Everyone has an ego. Um, everyone, uh, works differently. Um, so what was great was I've spent six years with these people. I love these people, so I so, so I know how they are. Um, but it was it it was challenging sometimes. Actors are going to challenge you, and and 
Um, even though I love these individuals and they love me, some of them were more challenging than others, right? Um, but that's okay. That's the job. That's 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 what it's supposed to be. Um, but it was amazing to to do this episode um, with them, and uh, because I got a chance also from because I've gotten a chance to work with every single one of them. So there are certain things about them that I know that perhaps directors who come in one to two times a year, they're not spending as much time with them as people, as actors, as, as I am, as, 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 as I have. So I have an insight to these people that I don't think most directors who worked on the show have. Um, with the exception of maybe someone like Nathan Hope, who's who's was our um, producing director um, uh, first first season. Uh, so it was great for me to be able to push them in a way that um, I wanted to see them. Um, uh, that it was great for me to also be able to take a look at their characters in this episode and go, OK, what is something that the fans deserve and something that they haven't seen and maybe something that that this artist has shied away from um, with this character. Um, a perfect example would be Amy. Um, I loved working with Amy, just loved working with her. And there's this scene that people will see at, at, at somewhat uh, uh, towards the beginning of, of um, uh, the episode. I believe it's the it's the second scene um, where uh, there's some action going on and a decision has been made that uh, they need to go to heaven and find out what's what's going on. And uh, because Lucifer is having some issues, he can't get his wings working. Amenadiel decides to go. And the scene as written is they're just on the rooftop. They're probably in a semicircle and they're talking and a decision is made to fly up to heaven. And he jumps up and goes, goes up to heaven and Ella sees it for the first time and is blown away. I really made a big pitch. I pitched big that that it wasn't Ella is the fans. And so she is this uh, person that that is the only faith based person in the entire show. This is a huge moment for her. And we have to carve that moment out. That moment has to be everything for her. So I directed her away from the group. I wanted her isolated. I wanted the camera to be moving. I wanted to really stay on her face. And um, that was probably the best night that I've had um, on, on the entire um, episode. And it's, it's, it's just something that I love. And so, and so that's, it, it's, it's stuff like that, 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 that I like to find as a, um, director. I want to make sure that um, we're not simply running over a moment, that we can take our time with a moment. And by taking our time, it will be much more impactful as opposed to just more words. So that was one of those moments that I, that I just love. And I, I love that you brought up that specific scene because when we talked to her, she calls that out as saying that with you directing her in that specific scene that she feels like that's some of the best work that she's ever done in her career. So I love oh, that so, she's both so had sweet. that shared experience. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about the way in which directing really shifts your perspective in terms of acting, because particularly when you're going through post-production and you're going through all the different takes and you're having to be the person making that choice of, you know, this may be the stronger performance, but this one fits the beat of the scene better. And that's why we're going to use this take instead, or even just really looking at how the different angles can play scenes in so many different ways. Has that given you a different perspective, you know, and did it in the last couple of episodes that you were continuing to film after that in how you were thinking about your own performance and the different ways that you could potentially play things and even just paying more attention and thinking differently about what the overall blocking and choreography and setup of a scene was. Um, I, you know, I'm really lucky because this is something I've been doing. Like I said, I just haven't done it on a professional level, but it's something I've been doing for, for quite some time. And if this had been the very first time, then yes, there, there, there would have been a lot of things that, um, surprised me or that, or that I would have, uh, discovered in the, um, edit, um, as a first time actor, that's now, uh, first time 
director um uh that's an actor that's directing i think you know what i mean what yeah. like what i'm trying to say um so uh, it wasn't so that stuff didn't surprise me but there was something that surprised me um just straight as a director that i was i was shocked by which is if you don't have it you're not going to find it in the edit and what i mean by that is there were a few days where um uh and i'm you know comes from a good place where there were one or two people whose job it is to to kind of let me know that maybe we we have to move on or that we don't need they feel like we don't need more shots what i learned in the edit was if you have the time get the more shots because i remember one day uh in the edit talking to my editor and we were talking about something and she simply said to me she goes you don't have that i wish you did but you don't have that and i told her what had happened on set and she just simply said yeah you got it you just need to get what you need you know um because once you get to the edit you're looking for something and if you don't have it if you don't have the footage we can't you know there's nothing that she can do you know so i know sometimes people talk about saving things in the edit um i know that's happened but what i would say is don't lean into that i mean don't you know because if you don't have something you don't have it i don't care how great your editor is but if they don't have uh the footage they don't have it and so the lesson that i did learn is is get the footage that i feel like i need it's it's better to have it uh and not need it than need it and not have it and then lastly, you you were talking about how your your working technique and your style is to be very over prepared in everything that you do, whether it's directing, whether it's acting. And obviously, looking back at when you first got the character, there's so much character development, so much preparation that goes into that moment before you even step on set for your first scene. But looking at the final season, what were the spaces from a performance aspect where you were still kind of following that thing of being really over prepared and, and the details that you really wanted to have figured out before you would step onto set each time? Uh, the biggest thing for me as an actor this season was I wanted him to be a lot more loose. Um, uh, there was a, a, a kind of um, him being uh, celestial and not really interacting with humans. There was a kind of um, uh, regalness or, or, or stiffness to him. Um, uh, it was something that would just kind of separate him from uh, not not just his uh, family, um, but also from humans and that he was someone um, a, a kind of a coolness. And as the seasons went on, that he would become more warm, um, more cuddly, you know, fuzzy. Um, but in the final season, I um, I wanted him to be more than that. I wanted him to be loose. You know, as if um, you're just kind of hanging with a guy who's really comfortable with being himself and not in an arrogant way. Um, he just doesn't feel the need to put on airs or to um, prove himself or to just someone who who could just melt into the sofa with his buddies. Um, someone who's just a lot more um, loose in the way that he speaks. Uh, especially being on the police force, dealing with people. Um, that was more important to me this season than any other season. And so I haven't seen the sixth season. I hope I accomplished that. We'll see. Um, but that was the idea going into the final season for me. Well, I love everything that you've done with this character and all the journeys that you've carried him on and giving a celestial character so much genuine humanity and heart. And thank you so much for sharing all of this with us, DB. Oh, thank you.